What's going on everyone? Welcome back. I hope everybody's having a great day. As you guys noticed, we did not have a hangout over the weekend because of Mother's Day. And I hope all you women out there, all moms out there, had a great Mother's Day. We had a great weekend. Uh, let's see, my youngest daughter, she uh, graduated college. My son's birthday was on the 12th. My oldest daughter came up from Florida. And we had a great time, so I hope you guys did as well. And all, and all the dads that are just doing this by themselves... Kudos to you for doing that as well. So, so I hope everybody had a great uh, Mother's Day and a great weekend, right? All right, guys, what is the weather like on Mars? Now, a lot of you guys can look this up, but let's put the pieces together and find out what we come up with. Both the color of the sky, the atmosphere, stuff like that. So this is more an informative video, but I think you guys are going to like this. All right, so let's have a look here. All right, this and this is going to kind of surprise you guys, or maybe not. Okay, here we go. Insight images a sunrise on Mars. And, of course, you can see the sun way back there. All right. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. Way back there. And, you can, of course, you can download either one of these. There's actually two of them. There's a color corrected. And, of course, the one we're looking at now. Now, let's look at the color corrected because it's funny how they word this underneath. Here's the color corrected version. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm seeing like a tint of blue and a tint of gray kind of thing. Um, and this could be due to fog, right? And you might say fog. Just keep watching. You'll see what I'm saying. Color corrected, NASA's InSight lander used its instrument deployment camera, or the IDC, on the spacecraft's robotic arm to image this sunrise on Mars. This color corrected version more accurately shows the image as the human eye would see it. Now, most normal cameras would actually do that, right? In other words, if you've got a handy cam or regular uh, your phone uh, camera, whatever it may be, right, uh, we'll show that. Okay, so why not just do that all the time? Why don't you just show the pictures as the eye would see it? Or to me, it's just a natural, you know, camera or ma natural view, right? Uh, it just makes sense. Why this here? Why this crap brown? Um, what's the reason for it? And what do they accomplish by seeing this? Doesn't make any sense, does it? Um, okay, here's another page. And of course, you guys will get all of these pages. And now you'll get all the links as usual. And you get the downloads. You can see right here, you get the original one, as I said. And of course, you got the colored version. You can just download here. Okay. And now it's showing InSight Images clouds on Mars. And you can see what looks like these clouds. And of course, I think they sped up the film itself, so given this kind of like rapid uh, cloud movement. Um, but let's go down. Same thing applies, guys. Check this out. Again, color corrected. And it's saying right here on the bottom, NASA's InSight used its instrument context camera, not the IDC this time, it's the ICC, beneath the lander's deck to image this drifting clouds at sunset. This color corrected version more accurately shows the image as the human eye would see it. So again, the question arises, why not just use the camera on the spectrum that our eyes can see and that we can just see this all the time as natural? What's the reason why using this again, this kind of red brownish filter? Doesn't make any sense, does it? But when you look at it, you can see these things are wispy clouds. It looks like it even gets a, 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 a more of a cloud cover, like really, it looks like a good blanket of clouding right there. See it? As it gets dark, you can see more and more of it. Yeah. Um, and you can see they just kind of talk about that. Okay. Here we go right here. These ice clouds, as they call them. Uh, clouds scoot across the Martian sky in the movie clip, uh, consisting of 10 frames taken by the surface stereo imager on NASA's Phoenix Mars lander. This clip accelerates the motion. The camera took uh, these 10 frames over a 10-minute period. So basically one, you know, uh, one clip per, per minute, right? Uh, from 2.52, now we don't really need to know all that. Local solar time at the Phoenix site during Asal 94, August 29th, uh, the 94th Martian day since landing. Particles of water ice make up these clouds, like uh, ice crystal cirrus clouds on Earth. Ice hazes have been common at the Phoenix site in recent days. The camera took these images as part of the campaign by the Phoenix team to see clouds and track winds. Uh, and then, of course, it tells you what direction it's coming from. So it's pretty interesting. I mean, you see the same exact clouds. Now, if the atmosphere is so different, why are we seeing almost the same exact clouds, right? Basically, no atmosphere. So yet we're still seeing the same kind of clouds as we do here on Earth. Okay. So let's see the temperature on Mars. And then there's a video here I'm going to let you take a peek at. And I'm not going to run the video only because of copyright. Uh, we may not get copyrighted, but I'm not going to take the chance. But I stopped it at a certain uh, place, and you'll see why in a minute. Mars's atmosphere is about 100 times thinner than Earth's, which I doubt, but let's go with it. Without a thermal blanket, Mars can't retain any heat energy. Kind of like in the wintertime where you get that uh, radiational cooling. 
it's kind of like here on Earth, only with clouds, where you got the clouds coverage, and of course you get that radiational heating. But if it's clear at night, what does it do? It it, it gets real cold at night. Now if it's cloudy, it tends to hold the heat in. Only the difference is they're talking about atmospheric, you know. Um, and of course, as it says, Mars can't retain any heat energy. On average, the temperature on Mars is about minus 80 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 60 degrees Celsius. In winter, near the poles, temperatures can get down to minus 195 degrees or 125 degrees Celsius. A summer day on Mars may get up to about 70 degrees Fahrenheit, 20 degrees Celsius, near the equator. Now, funny enough, I read before, and I can't find it now, but it said that the Curiosity rover had registered a uh, temperature of 104 degrees in the shade, right? So, uh, it gets pretty warm there. Okay. Near the equator, but at night, the temperature can plummet to about minus 100 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 73 degrees uh, Celsius. NASA's Mars Curiosity rover measured air temperatures as, as high as 43 degrees Fahrenheit or 6 degrees Celsius in the afternoon with temperatures climbing above freezing for a significant uh, number of days, right? That we are seeing temperatures this warm already during the day is a surprise and very interesting, Felipe Gomez said in a statement. Frost forms on rocks at night, but as dawn approaches... Uh, and the air gets warmer, the frost turns to vapor. And there is 100% humidity until it evaporates. The high humidity can help make Mars more habitable if the water condenses to form short-term puddles in the early morning hours. Well, if you think about it, if it's evaporating, this is the reason why we're getting clouds. Okay? Think about that, and we're going to get into that a little bit more, too. Um, the conditions on Mars where the relative humidity is high and the available water vapor is approximately 100% precipitable, uh, microns, is the equivalent of the drier parts of the Atacama Desert in Chile, John Rummel at East Carolina University told Space.com by email. According to Rummel, the humidity uh, of Mars is tied to temperature fluctuations. At night, relative humidity levels can rise to 80 to 100%, with the air sometimes reaching atmospheric saturation. The daytime air is far drier due to warmer temperatures. On Earth, some forms of life are able to survive in parched regions by po uh, poaching water from the humid air. Among these, lichens dominate, surviving in arid climates without succumbing to the dry spells that frequently occur. Some lichens in super dry areas have been found to photosynthesize at relative humidity levels as low as 70%. Other research has demonstrated that a form of Antarctic lichen can adapt to life under simulated Martian conditions. Hmm. Such short-term wet periods might be long enough and warm enough to allow for Earth organisms to metabolize and even reproduce, Rummel said. Okay, if you haven't seen a lichen, which are these here on the rocks. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I've been in a lot of forests where you see this all over stones and you see it on trees. And guess what? It's in areas, at least in my area, it's usually not a whole lot of sun shining in the area. It's usually shaded and it's very moist. What do you guys think about that? So this is basically what that looks like. And it's different forms. You can see it like on this tree here. See that? So yeah, there's, there's quite a bit of it. And you can see it like again. Here you go. Um, and you can see flora, which are lichens. Um, so on and so forth. So there is life there somehow. Uh, seasons on Mars, like Earth. Uh, Mars has four seasons because the planet tilts on its axis. The seasons vary in length because of Mars's eccentric orbit around the sun. In the northern hemisphere, spring is the longest season at seven months. Hmm. Summer and fall are both about six months long. Winter is only four months long. During a Martian summer, the polar ice cap, composed mainly of uh, carbon ice, ice shrinks. During the Martian summer, the polar ice cap, composed mainly of carbon dioxide ice, shrinks and may disappear altogether. When winter comes, the ice cap grows back. There may be some liquid water trapped beneath the carbon dioxide ice sheet, scientists say. And we've already seen that. We're, we already know that that happens because uh, they've admitted that there's actually H2O underneath the carbon ice. Kind of the same way we have it here on Earth. If you go to the poles, same thing applies or the same thing we find here, right? Uh, an evolving world. In the past, Mars may have been warmer and wetter with an average global temperature of 50 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, which I believe is a whole lot uh, higher than that. We've learned that Mars is a dynamic planet. Uh, Michael Mayer, lead scientist for NASA's Mars Exploration Program, told reporters in 2011. We've learned that it has a history where it was warmer and wet at the same time that life started here on Earth. Hmm, imagine that. Other researchers suggest that the red planet may have once been white, an icy wasteland with an average temperature of minus 54 degrees, or minus uh, 48 degrees uh, Celsius, 
According to Robin Wordsworth, say that five times fast, a researcher at Harvard, a colder scenario is more straightforward to model because Mars only gets about 43% of the solar energy of Earth, and the early Mars was lit by a younger sun believed to have... I don't believe all that crap. All right, there's a reason why I, I stopped this video where it's at. Now, they talk about the Mars magnetic fields are sporadic, and you can see right here, and I'm just going to go ahead and do this, you can see where it's got these, they call them magnetic umbrellas. Okay, so knowing that, they're different sizes. So that means, and I told you guys this before, where I believe that uh, man can be on Mars because it's being shielded by these umbrellas so the radiation doesn't, doesn't in fact, you know, kill you off, so to speak, uh, or you don't get uh, a high radiation because of these magnetic fields. The same thing applies here on Earth where we have these magnetic fields. Of course, it's planet-wide, and it shields us from these uh, the solar radiation, right? Okay, so let's take a look at this photo because this is pretty cool. And it talks about the methane coverage and methane release northern summer. And you can see this area. It says northern summer. Hmm. This is in the equatorial region. You can see just right here at the top, you can see the polar cap. Okay, look at the size of this methane area. Now, first it was, uh, I believe it was MAVEN, and I believe it was the uh, uh, Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, as well as... Curiosity, they all, or at least two of them, had registered these methane uh, plumes. It's not like it's like one mile in radius. Look at the size of this on this planet. And guess what? It's in the equatorial region for one. Guess where all the rovers and landers are mostly at? Equatorial region. Secondly, question. Is it possible that those areas are underneath one of these magnetic umbrellas? If that's true, you can almost bet there's life thriving there. And this is the reason why there was probably life on this planet, and I mean intelligent life. And of course, pure speculation, there's no way to know this. But judging, and I said this before, judging on what we've seen in the past in these photos that uh, NASA has supplied us, that there was an intelligent life on this planet. And I believe that we could still walk around on the planet as long as we're in one of these umbrella areas. And of course, with these satellites, we can tell exactly where these umbrellas, these magnetic fields are strongest, right? Think about it. So we put down these rovers and landers, maybe the radiation would affect the cameras and all. So and that's the reason why they landed them down in this particular area. I believe there's life there, and whether it's microbial or macro, it doesn't matter. I believe that there's life there, and I believe there's insects, maybe even other flying things, birds, of Martian birds or whatever. Again, pure speculation, but I believe there's also intelligent life there. Of course, you guys can give me your take on that, right? Um, and here we go again. Here's another thing. Auroras on Mars... Uh, in late December 2014, NASA's MAVEN spacecraft detected evidence of widespread auroras in Mars' northern hemisphere. The Christmas lights, as researchers call them, circled the globe and descended so close to the Martian equator that, if the lights had occurred on Earth, they would have been over places like Florida and Texas. It really is amazing, says Nick Schneider, who leads MAVEN's Imaging Ultraviolet Spectrograph, or IUVS, instrument team at the University of Colorado. Auroras on Mars appear to, to be more wide-ranging than we ever imagined. This isn't the first time the spacecraft have detected auroras on Mars. Ten years ago, the European Space Agency's Mars Express found an ultraviolet glow coming from the magnetic umbrellas in the southern hemisphere. Unlike Earth, Mars does not have a global magnetic field that envelops the entire planet. Instead, Mars has umbrella-shaped magnetic fields that sprout out of the ground like mushrooms here and there, but mainly in the southern hemisphere. Uh, these umbrellas are remnants of ancient global field that decayed millions of years ago. Or has it? Whether they are, you know, if it's planet-wide or not, doesn't mean anything to me, to be truthful with you guys. I believe that when you see these umbrellas like this, and of course this is only like a uh, CGI rendering, whatever, uh, it doesn't matter. It gives you an idea what it would be like, like scattered around the planet. Um, I believe that's true. I believe that Life could be under there, and life can thrive. And as long as these magnetic fields are there, I think man can be there. Um, again, being shielded from the solar radiation, you've got clouds, you've got a uh, water cycle on Mars, as, and it's not just carbon, it's H2O. Well, I read it to you guys earlier where it said 70 degrees, I've seen it up to 104. Think about it. They say that the, because if it had more of an atmosphere back in the day, it would have been around 54 degrees Celsius. Okay, now that there's no, according to them, no uh, magnetic field, only in some spots, that I think it would get much warmer. Much, much warmer. And then, of course, temperature swings because, you know, there's nothing to keep the uh, radiational heat in or on the planet. It just actually goes out to the, out into space, so to speak. So, 
I believe that there is actually life on this planet. I believe there always has been. It just maybe gotten a lot smaller due to its atmospheric conditions. But again, these when you see this methane or methane, as my friends over there in the UK want to say it, um, again, pole up here. Look at this. Look at the size of this area, man. And again, where are these rovers in the equatorial region? You guys give me your take. What are your thoughts on this? So to me, when I think about all this, I put all the puzzle pieces together. What do I have? I have what still may be life on this planet, and I mean flourishing. I mean actual, you know, shrubs, trees, insects, small animals, so on and so forth, in these protected areas, right? These magnetic protected areas is what I'll call them, these umbrellas. I believe there's still life there, and I believe it wasn't too long ago this intelligent civilization lived there. Judging by some of the structures we still see and what look like these weird, you know, uh, transportation devices, whether it be vehicles of some sort or whatever they may be, because most people say, well, there's no way this stuff could have been there for millions of years due to, you know, erosion, wind erosion, water, so on and so forth. But again, we don't know how they built it. If it was pure stainless steel, you know, stainless steel can actually last pretty long if it's pure stainless steel, right? Um, anyway, guys, give me your thoughts. Drop your comments down below and like and share the video. You know, you got to let this information get out. And do you guys think there is actually still life on that planet? Maybe microbial, macro, um, small insects, birds so on and so forth. Again, give me your thoughts. Anyway, guys, got some more videos coming up. We're going to be rolling them out for you guys, so stay tuned for those. And of course, we will be on this weekend coming up at 7 o'clock Sunday evening. It'll be 7 o'clock Eastern time. So definitely stay tuned for that as well. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Always appreciate it. You guys know that. And I'll see you on the flip side.